start providing education up to the 10th grade upgraded itself to the 12th grade only three years after the college opened. Graduates of the girls' senior secondary school now continue the higher education at this college. The Mrs. Helena Koshik Women's College has been a great source of inspiration and motivation to women of all ages. Even married women are resuming their education. Others are putting off marriage and childbearing until the 20s. Many students aspire to careers in education, law, public administration, business, and social service. It was certainly my pleasure to be able to go to the college and see these young women so motivated, really interested in getting that higher education, and knowing that without the college there, they probably never would have had that opportunity for higher education. Helena and Surindra Koshik were honored by the New York State Assembly on April 6, 2009. The New York State Assembly actually passed a resolution um, it complimenting and, and uh, congratulating the college for its good work over the last 10 years. In much of the developing world, the female population represents an untapped resource and a hope for the future. Educating girls is a crucial component of building a strong foundation for democracy and a prerequisite for creating and sustaining free, open, prosperous societies. Consider this. About half of every nation's population consists of women. Nations that marginalize one half of their population cannot function and thrive as full democracies. Nor can countries that ignore this vital source of human capital be competitive in today's globalized economy. Much more needs to be done to remove gender barriers to learning and literacy. We definitely feel that the gender gap in education should be narrowed, which, really, which is there at the moment. So not enough women are getting it, so we want more. The college fees are substantially rationalized to make the superior quality education affordable to the poorest of the poor. Helena Koshik, if she doesn't make it, she doesn't make it. 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 The actual amount the student pays is less than 10% of the cost. In addition to his own funds, Dr. Koshik raises the running costs of the college through appeals, benefit concerts and contributions. I have seen private institutions in some developed towns where there is scope for profiteering also. So here is a different institution, entirely different institution from those there is no profit motive here. It is all pure love for education, a, a, a job being undertaken with a great mission, a commitment, a dedication. It is this unselfish and unyielding spirit of giving that has contributed invaluably towards the organic growth and development of the Institute. This in turn has benefited these young lady graduates and boosted the social status of several such families which under normal circumstances would be unheard of. Education of women and including higher education of women is not only going to generate uh, a resource that will get reflected in GDP, the traditional notion of a productive human capital, but given women's very special role in the family and also in propagating values, I think they have a bigger role there actually than men. The Mrs. Helena Koshik Women's College remains a deeply rooted local institution with a global perspective and world-class education. Over 60 Americans, Canadians and Germans have already visited the college, many as lecturers in their respective fields of expertise, such as American life and culture, art, biology, business, economics, education, energy, English, gender studies, music, nursing, religion, sustainable development, and women's empowerment. 
Exchange students, faculty, business people, professionals, and visitors from all talents and industries are welcome to be a part of the college. From a day visit to a semester or longer, institutional affiliations and joint programs are also welcomed and encouraged. Americans have established scholarships, lecture series, donated books, funded programs, and labs. These initiatives have made the mark on the lives of over 600 students who have already graduated and an additional 440 students who are currently working towards the graduation in 2010. Dr. Kaushik continues to champion the cause of education for women in rural India. Recognizing his tremendous achievement, Richard Ottinger, founding staff member of the Peace Corps, a former director of Peace Corps in Latin America and former member of the House of Representatives where he was chairman of the Subcommittee on Energy and Environment and former dean of the Pace Law School sponsored a conference on renewable energy during his first visit to India in January 2002. He delivered a paper and published it in Northwest Law Review. He later became a board member on the Helena Koshik Education Foundation, a non-profit 501c3 organization. This is uh, an extraordinary accomplishment uh, for any person to do in his lifetime, to create this kind of an institution, give this kind of opportunity to rural women uh, to excel, and it's an important exemplar for the rest of the world because if we're going to succeed in solving the many problems uh, that confront uh, the world and confront India, uh, uh, education is the key. To promote scholarly research and policy debate, six national and international seminars have been held at the college since 2002 on renewable energy, sustainable development, women's education and development, women leaders and development, gender violence and protection of women, and microfinance and development. Two have been published as books edited by eminent scholars in education and development and in microfinance. Dr. Koshe has also led dozens of educators, diplomats, politicians, business people and doctors to Malsisar. They have addressed small groups of students in classrooms, residence halls, and in large ceremonial functions, cultural events, graduation, and convocations. The talks help the students expand the knowledge in areas outside the curriculum, and it helped give perspective to the tremendous mission in which the Mrs. Helena Koshik Women's College is engaged in. The college was among the first hundred institutions subscribing to the principles of responsible management education of the United Nations. While the women of Malsisar don't reject the value of family, many today believe their lives have a meaning far beyond the traditional prescription. The best clue to a nation's growth and development potential is the status and role of women. It is the status and role of women that is undergoing a gradual change, thanks to the expansion of education. यदि हिली ना कोशिश नहीं होता माविदाले नहीं होता तो मैं नहीं पढ़ती यहाँ आसपास में तो कोई कॉलेज है नहीं और दूर मुझे गाल नहीं सकते अकेली रह गई एक तो सर और फिर आर्थिक स्थिति भी और यहाँ तो बस फीस का ही पैसे लगते हैं और वहाँ तो रहने के भी खर्चे लगते जाने आने के भी खर्चे लगते the homes now will have educated mothers, wives, and daughters-in-law benefiting their families for many generations to come in terms of education and social standing of women. When women thrive, all of the society benefits and succeeding generations are given a better start in life. If a girl gets a teacher, she will be self-dependent and then she will get more confidence that she will not be able to do with any of the girls in any month. और कुछ भी कर सकती है किसी भी क्षेत्र में मैं पीएचडी करना चाहती हूं और फिर लेक्चरर बनना चाहती हूं दिस इज डन सिंपली बाय क्रिएटिंग एन एनवायरनमेंट कंडूसिव टू एंड सपोर्टिव ऑफ एजुकेशन एफर्ट्स ऑफ कोशिक इज गिविंग डिविडेंड्स टू दैट एरिया एंड गर्ल चाइल्ड एजुकेशन इज 
having a boost in this area higher 